After installation, you can find mRestyle title templates inside the title templates tab and then under mRestyle. There's 50 different templates to choose from broken into different categories. There's a CCTV, a dreamy look, some glitches, some graphical effects, and some retro effects. Here's a quick preview of all the different templates. Now that you've seen all the different presets available, let's take a look at what we're going to be creating inside this tutorial. To use any of these title templates, just click and drag and drop it right above your clips in your project. To change the timing of any of the title templates, just drag on either side edge handle and pull it to its new duration. Even though these are presets, if I select it in my timeline and come up to the inspector, I can continue to make changes to that preset. That includes turning off animations, turning off specific effects, or in the case of this one, there's a colorization option. I can turn that on or off and even adjust the specific color of this highlight. So just by dragging over here, you can see how much we've tinted this. I'll just undo that. Because this is the CCTV preset, you'll notice that this one has static and some waviness. I really like this particular setup because I can dial in a very specific look and there's just a lot of nuance control. Look at the static rate. I can turn this up and actually increase the rate of the static. Turn off the distortion completely or even change the strength of the distortion. So if I wanted to create a rewind or a fast forward kind of look, we can animate these across time. Each preset is going to have its unique set of controls. So for example, this one has some static and some prism effects, but if I grab another one and place it into my timeline and we'll shorten the duration, this preset will have a completely different set of controls. There may be some that overlap like our animation in out, but outside of that, it'll have controls that are unique to that particular preset. You're not limited to just one preset per clip either. You can stack as many as you'd like to really compound your effect. In this case, I've added a second glitch effect between being able to customize the individual presets and mixing and matching different parts of presets, the possibilities for your style and what you can create with these are practically limitless. This clip to me looks very dreamy because it's very bright. So let's go ahead and use one of these from the dreamy category. That looks pretty good already, but we're gonna go ahead and adjust this a little bit more. Depending on the different presets you're using, some of them may have on-screen controls in addition to the controls inside the inspector. For example, I have this one here that has a little control puck that will control the ray burst from wherever I place it. I'll just review this back and forth and disable it with the V key to check a before and after. And let's move on to this next clip. In the last couple examples, we've made some fairly subtle changes. Let's use one from the graphic pack and I'll show you how you can radically change the look of this clip just using a couple of the checkboxes and sliders inside your inspector. Using the controls for the outlines and the posterization and color settings, it's really easy to experiment with different looks and setups by just changing a few of the values in the sliders. Let's take a look at one more example using the dreamy preset again. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want to show you that no matter what the topic of your edit or the theme of your project, there's always going to be a matching and useful preset that'll perfectly fit it and boost the atmosphere of that shot. 
I'm making some quick changes here with the colorization and some of the vignette. We're gonna take this up another level by adding a second preset on top of this. Inside this second preset, I have some lens distortion and reflection controls. If I turn that on and off, I can just preview what that's going to look like. And I can see I like that reflection, but I'd like to move it. So I'm gonna use this control to move that reflection over a bit. And I can even move it up and down by using the Y axis control. And typically this will be my workflow. I'll work my way down through the inspector and experiment with these different presets just to see what it's going to look like. And I'll continually try out different combinations until I'm finally happy with the shot. Let's take a look at the before and after. I'll select both of these clips and just disable and enable it using that V key again. For our last clip, I'll use one of the presets from the retro category. Inside the inspector, I've turned off the animation in out and the lens distortion. I'm gonna turn that off. This vignette is a blur vignette, so turning this on and off will turn off that blur and I can change the radius and even the amount and even specifically the vertical or horizontal blur amount. Inside this retro effect, it's got some filmic effects too. And what I love about the filmic effects is that this could be its own effect all by itself. There's so many controls in here that let you tweak the specific knee and the hue and saturation of our values that there's a whole lot you can do with just this. There's some different jitters and some other bad film effects inside this effect, some noise. And at the very bottom, we have our Q mark. And that Q mark is, again, a filmic effect that we can move over using our inspector controls, or you can independently turn that off if that's not your style. Now let's take a final look at the example. Yeah. My name is Stanislaw with Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.